What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Footballers. My name is Tony, you can follow me down below at Lyman Football. Now I know when we posted on our story and we said guys, we're only gonna do one more what pros are wearing right now on the field for the year and we had you guys vote on it. The votes came in, that video is still coming out. But this week we've had a highly, highly requested question that we wanna cover before the season's over in case there is a switch after that. So we wanna cover it now and that way we can see what happens in the off season. From the title here, we're gonna be talking about Nick Bosa. Now the reason we're doing this Nick Bosa video is because most of you saw that he got his concussion in the game versus Dallas and then he switched helmets for the last two games of the season versus Green Bay and then versus the Rams. No big name players have actually worn this helmet yet besides Alex Mack who's also on the 49ers. So the main focus of today's video is going to be on his helmet setup. Other than that, he doesn't really wear a lot of crazy stuff. So we're gonna spend a lot of time on the helmets hit all the other stuff just to make sure we cover everything, but that's gonna be the video. Now let's start out with Nick Bosa's helmet setup. So this year he's actually worn three completely different helmet setups. The first one he wore this year, which he also wore at Ohio State, was the Riddell Speed Flex. So Nick Bosa has worn a Riddell Speed Flex for the majority of his career. He wore one at Ohio State. He's worn one most of his time with the 49ers. Now you guys know we've talked about the Speed Flex so many, so many times in the past that you know it has that hexagon shaped panel in the front that it uses to flex and so it helps absorb impact. Now depending on the level of helmet, if he has a Riddell Speed Flex, a Speed Flex Precision Fit, or a Speed Flex Diamond, that'll kind of tell you the level of protection and it'll actually be reflected in the Virginia Tech rating scale. Now if you do want to pick up the Riddell Speed Flex, it is $440 on Green Gridiron's website. We'll have it linked down below. Now to go along with that helmet, uh, as a face mask, Nick Bosa has worn the same style face mask across every one of his helmets. He likes it open on the bottom, two eye guards, that's pretty much it. So with the Speed Flex, he's wearing the SF2EG SW. That just means SW is there's two bars on the front, dead center here, two eye guards, that's pretty much it. Really wide open face mask. Again, if you want to pick up one of those, I think they're like 89 bucks at Green Gridiron uh, down below as well. Okay, the next helmet we're gonna talk about is gonna be his Vices 02 helmet. So in spring camp this year and in preseason, Nick Bosa wore a Vices 02 adult helmet. His brother Joey Bosa also wore the exact same 02 helmet. However, when they actually got into the year, Nick went back to his Speed Flex and Joey stayed in his Vices 02. So he really only spent a couple days in this helmet, not a ton of time. Uh, we are gonna pretty much glaze over it at this point. But if you do wanna pick up the O2 for yourself, I think it's $8.99 and then we have it linked through Sports Unlimited uh, down below. But the reason everyone's here is gonna be the helmet that Nick Bosa wore for the Green Bay Packers game and the LA Rams game. And that is he wore the Vices O2 Trench. Now this is the first football helmet on the market that is position specific. So this year Vices came out with the O2 and the O2 trench. Now the O2 is for every other position, right? The O2 is made to go to receiver, running back, quarterback, linebacker, everyone else the O2 was designed for. But the O2 trench was a lineman specific helmet. The big difference with this is on the front here, you can see it has this really long, big panel. Now what they call that is their deformable panel. And what that means is if you think about a car bumper, how the bumper, when you hit something, the bumper on the edges is made to kind of flex out of it and absorb some of that impact. It works the exact same way. So that panel is made specifically for low velocity impact plays where you're coming in at really not super high speeds because you don't have a lot of time to run up against each other. It's made to take in that low velocity, high impact plays and it's made to absorb that energy. That's why it has this big piece on the front of it. Now this helmet is the highest rated helmet ever from Virginia Tech. It rates a 0.56, the lower on the scale, the better. Uh, the O2 normal ranks slightly above that. And if you look at like the Riddell Speed Flex or even the Speed Flex Diamond, it ranks three times better than the Speed Flex Diamond, which retails for around the exact same price as this helmet. So it's the highest rated helmet ever created in football. But anyways, now the reason a lot of people haven't really switched into this new helmet yet, because it is so much safer, uh, I think is pretty much the style. I've been polling people on this helmet all throughout the year and everyone keeps saying, it's too ugly, it's too ugly. We don't want this big front bumper on the front. The only guys that have really been wearing it is actually his teammate, Alex Mack. There is a couple guys I think on the Packers that wear it. Yeah, that's really the only guy that wears it religiously every week is Alex Mack, the center for the 49ers and either the equipment staff talked to Nick Bosa or Alex talked to Nick Bosa. But once he was cleared from concussion protocol, when Nick came back, he was in that Vices O2 trench and he wore it for the last two games. Now, if you do wanna pick up this helmet, it retails for $9.99. Again, super expensive, 
But if you compare it to the exact same price as the Speedflex Diamond that a lot of other players are wearing, like Trent Williams, it's actually the same price and it's three to four times more safe than those helmets. So perspective. Now with both of those two helmets, he actually wore the exact same face mask, uh, Vice's face masks. You can switch back and forth between the O2 trench and the normal O2. So with that, he wore what they call, it's the S0122E, two lower bars right here, two eye guards, dead simple face mask. Okay, next we're gonna talk about Nick Bosa's shoulder pads. So he is, again, still in Riddell. He's wearing the Riddell CPK O-lineman, D-lineman shoulder pads. So these are from the Riddell Power Series. Uh, they're really good for mobility. They're super lightweight. This is Riddell's competitor to like the X-Tech where it has a hard shell and there's a lot of mobility for his arms. And you can see, you know, Nick Bosa's everywhere. He's really good at putting that leverage. So it gives him all that mobility and range of motion he needs while they're still super lightweight and super protective. If you wanna pick up these shoulder pads, I think they're 440 bucks on Riddell's website. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is going to be Joey Bosa's gloves. So this year he's only worn like one or two pairs of gloves, exact same model, just a couple different colorways. He is wearing the Nike Superbad 6.0 gloves and I actually finally have a pair here, shout out to East Bay. The thing that was unique about these this year is gonna be the way that they have the padding. Uh, they have this wishbone shape, that's how you can always tell these here. The wishbone is vented, it's a vented system on here. All the rest of this is padded on the top and it kind of allows it to flex with your hand as well. The grip on the inside is Nike's Magna Grip, super sticky, really good grip. And yeah, we do have a full review on these if you wanna check those out for yourself. But yeah, these gloves I think are 55 or 45 bucks. Uh, again, we'll have it linked through East Bay uh, in the description down below if you wanna pick them up for yourself. Nick Bosa really only wears them in two colorways. He likes them in an all white with uh, red accents, so the exact opposite of this. And with that, sometimes instead of the red, he'll do black as well. So only a couple different things. Okay, working our way down, we're gonna talk about Nick Bosa's thigh pads. Like a ton of other players in the league, Nick Bosa is now wearing the Trade Decals Custom Thigh Pads. Now what these are, it's a thigh pad that when you put it on, you can actually put customized designs on top of it, and so those designs show through on your pads. Now some teams, if they wear like black or dark blue or you know like burgundy, like the Commanders, uh, it's really hard to see these trade decals through it, but because San Francisco wears their gold pants and their white pants, it's really easy to see them through. On his right thigh, he normally wears it with the San Francisco 49ers logo in that thigh, and on his left thigh, he wears it with the number 97, which is his number. Now, trade decals isn't saying these offer more protection than like any other thigh pad, but it's more just about being able to customize and put exactly what you want on your own thighs. So another thing that people can customize. Okay, the last thing we're gonna talk about with Nick Bosa is going to be his football cleats. Now, he's worn almost the same cleats all season, just again, two different colorways. Uh, Nick Bosa likes to wear the Jordan 1 football cleat. Now these cleats came out to the public for a little bit, but not really a long time. You can still find them on like GOAT, StockX. Um, but yeah, these are a Jordan 1 silhouette with a traction plate on the bottom. So like all other Jordan cleats that were available to the public, they'll have the exact same traction plate on the bottom here. It's gonna be the Nike Lunar Beast Elite TD traction plate. Uh, it's okay, it's kind of just what they slap on all Jordans. Not a big fan of the big circle studs around here, although the teeth and the Alps outside do help a little bit. And you do have some talons here as well to help you get some good grip. So the traction plate is okay. I think me and Devin feel the same way that in the future, if they could add that alpha traction plate to like their higher top models, and if they could add like their two-piece edge stud traction plate to their more receiver models, that'd be really cool. But aside from that, it's gonna be the classic Jordan 1 silhouette that goes up. It gives them really good high ankle support. Now they are a heavier cleat than some like obviously your receiver and DB cleats, but as far as like other, comparing it to other lineman cleats, the Jordan 1s really aren't a heavier silhouette. Now this season, Nick has worn them in really two colorways. He's worn them in a Jordan 1 Chicago, a classic red, white, and black colorway. And then he's also worn them in this white and gold pair. Now it is important to remember, remember these are PEs. These might not be something that you will be able to get available, especially the gold pair. You might be able to find the Jordan 1 Chicago cleats on eBay. I'll try and link it down below if I can find it myself. Um, but yeah, you're definitely not gonna find these white with this shiny metallic gold that he has on here. Uh, he brought these out for the when they were an all white, like the throwback jersey, it looked so sick. So there you go, there is Nick Bosa's full gear breakdown. Again, the big thing with this video is gonna be wearing that O2 trench. We're really curious to see if he stays in that next year, if he goes down to the normal Vice's O2, if he goes to the Speed Flex back. Who knows what he's gonna do at this point, he definitely has some time to figure it out. Also, don't forget to subscribe. We put out a video every single week.